Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we look at van conversions, off grid power, lithium ion phosphate batteries and everything in between. Basically, we want to help you to get on the road, find that adventure and most importantly, have that epic cup of coffee wherever you want to because you have a great power system in your van. So uh, in this video, I'm going to be installing this guy. So this is the Dometic Hecky Mini style. Uh, so it's going to go on the outside, obviously, but this is the outside bit. It's going to go right here. I've chosen to put it in the second section here of the roof. Um, I originally was going to put it in the front there, but actually it's easier here to put it in just in the way that the ribs run and stuff like that here. And also I want to be able to use that front bit there for some storage. And so having the uh, skylight there would have made it difficult just to have a door and stuff like that on that section. Um, so yeah, that's why we're doing it on this section here. I've already marked out uh, where I'm going to put it um, and I've measured and double checked. So um, I've just gone around with the skylight and just checked that once I've cut that it'll fit in and there's still plenty of overhang on the edge of the skylight. So this bit here that you can see. So this is where the sealant will actually sit uh, in this section here. You can see that little groove there. So that's where your sealant is going to actually sit and uh, glue it uh, to the roof. Um, so yeah, a couple of things. Uh, one of the main reasons why I chose this uh, Dometic uh, skylight is one, it's a very cost effective skylight. So it's like just over a hundred pounds, uh, which is um, like $150 or thereabouts to get the big rectangle skylights like 400 pounds or somewhere around there. So I opted against one of those just because it's a massive expense for not a lot of value that I that it would add, I don't think. Um, I really like this Dometic one, the fact that it opens almost fully. So if I just open it quickly. Uh, so once that's on the roof, it can open all the way to there, which allows loads of airflow and light and stuff coming through there, um, which is really handy. And then obviously does the usual um, where it opens kind of like that and then locks in place and you can also have it slightly open as well so it just still ventilate so yeah on the whole pretty pretty happy with that like the way it looks um, so it comes with this in the box and I'll show you the rest of it also comes with this thing here which is the inside bit so this is the bit that actually screws onto the outside onto the top so that sits there like that. And this goes over above the uh, cladding and insulation, whatever you put into the van. And then it also comes with this bit here, which is the bit that has the fly screen for stopping insects and then your blackout screen as well. And so ultimately that will be the finish that'll sit somewhere like that and uh, clip onto the skylight. Um, so a couple of points just to note with picking a skylight for a van like this. One of the challenges you have with these sort of panel vans is that you have these ribs that run on the vehicle in various directions. Number of reasons why we have that. So one is uh, that this adds strength. So when you have these ribs on the van like this, it means that they don't have to have cross members that go up and down the van. So having those ribs just adds strength and rigidity rather than just a single uh, metal panel, which would flap around a lot. So the first thing. Second thing is that it directs water flow in certain directions and ways. So they kind of design these roofs in a way that they want the water to run off in a certain way. And so by having these ribs, it directs the water into certain channels and then the water can then run off in the right direction. So yeah, got it marked out. Um, I'm going to double check it, make sure everything's good. And then we're going to start getting after it with the angle grinder. Chosen just to cut this with the angle grinder today. I do have a nibbler as well, uh, but I think the angle grinder will be better. It's a very straightforward, just angled cut. Um, so yeah, I think that's what we're going to go for. Uh, just take care with cutting it make sure that we get it nice and accurate and then we'll just probably tidy it up and then just paint it so that we don't have any rust or anything like that uh, and then we should get, should be good to go all right let's double check this yeah it's more important to do that way around okay we're always going to double check and triple check pretty happy with that
fits like a glove. So we like to see. Yo, that is a nice tight fit. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that looked. Um, pretty much smashed it out the park in terms of cutting it straight on the lines there. And it fits in very snugly. Um, pretty much have to shimmy it through just a touch, but it doesn't shape it or anything like that. So pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, so yeah, pretty much couldn't get any better than that. I'm going to take it out, obviously. I'm just going to uh, whack on some Hammerite spray paint on there just to seal off the new uh, exposed metal. And then I, once that's dried, then I will get Psychoflex on there and get it nice and cleaned up. So overall, pretty happy with how that turned out. Nice and square and looks very neat. The skylight fits in there perfectly. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked, looking good. So just before we spray it, I'm going to quickly go over the edge here just with some rubbing alcohol just to clean it up a bit. So what I like to use on these van builds for anything related to the roof is this stuff. So this is Psychoflex 522. It's an adhesive sealant and pretty much anything that I would do on the roof or any external fixture or anything like that, I use this because it seals very well. It's, it's uh, protected against UV, so it doesn't corrode like some uh, silicones, things like that, other sealants do. Um, but it also is very strong. If you have a flat surface, so like on our camper, um, when we put new solar panels on there, I literally just use Psychoflex. As long as you get a decent amount of it on, <clears throat> Um, it is so strong, it'll hold panels together. Um, people build uh, habitation boxes. So my uncle builds overlanders in the USA and he uses this stuff pretty much just to glue the whole thing together. It doesn't even use any screws or anything like that because actually this, uh, a lot of the time, if you do it right, is actually stronger uh, than if you have screws because they can pull out and, and there's a single point where the force is um, held and things like that. So for this, I'm going to use Psychoflex to hold that uh, roof vent, the skylight, in and seal around it uh, and I'll be perfectly happy. So while I convert this, as I drive the van to collect materials and stuff like that, I'll be driving it just with the top bit in here glued on and I'm perfectly happy that that's not going to shift or change or do anything. Uh, so when I come to actually screw the bottom bit on, um, everything's going to be sorted. It's still going to be sealed and stuck on there good and tight uh, because the stuff is so good. So yeah, if you're doing anything on your van, you're going to go through a ton of the stuff. Okay, we are ready now to glue this in place. So I'm going to be preparing this. Um, I'm going to, because we're working with the ribs on the top that I mentioned before, I'm going to be putting a line of Psychoflex on this and then I'm also going to be putting an additional line of it on the top in between the ribs. So this line will basically come into contact with the line that I put on the top there and uh, we'll get a good seal. Okay, the front will be fine there. Right. 
Okay, so now I've just come down to the bottom and then I'm actually going to help it from the bottom here just because there's a few spots where it's just getting a bit stuck and I'm going to just pull it slightly. So one of the things with Psychoflex is that you don't, and, and with working with these ribs like this, is that you don't want to be pushing this thing down and completely losing all of the Psychoflex that's on the top of the ribs, just because if you squeeze it all out by pushing this down really hard, you lose your your seal. So I'm just going around and just gently pushing this down all the way around. <laughs> then I'm just going to put an extra line at the front because that's going to be the point where obviously as you drive water is going to be forced in there. <coughs> And here's the view inside. So a few places we've had the Psychoflex oozing through there, which is good to see it. We, th that means that uh, we've got plenty in there to keep it nice and sealed. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't push down too hard. Uh, I pretty much just made sure that the Psychoflex was contacting all the way around and then that it was down all the way, but you don't want to push it down with excessive force because then the areas on the top of the ribs uh, will not have much sealant and the more Psychoflex sealant you have, the, the more stronger it'll be. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the result there. You can see it pretty much oozing out all the way around. And on the outside, if it's oozing out on the outside, it's not a problem because the face that goes on the inside here goes uh, on the inside of that square. So uh, you'll be pretty sweet with that. You can see some of it oozing out there, which is good to see. Then we know it's sealed nicely and there's stuff all the way around so yeah overall pretty pleased with it and there we have it folks fully sealed in pretty happy with how that went as you can see there is a ton of psychoflex in there um i actually ended up using two tubes for this so i mentioned previously the challenge that you have is when you are trying to seal between these ribs because obviously the skylight itself is going to sit on the ribs and uh, so you have to fill that gap underneath there completely with Psychoflex. So <clears throat> I used two tubes of Psychoflex for this, which may seem a bit excessive, but at least I know it's fully sealed. Um, I also did attempt to do it a bit neater with a proper finishing tool. So you can buy like Draper and various other brands have their proper finishing tools, uh, which work pretty well. Uh, but in this case, it's quite challenging just with the ribs. So I um, landed up just using a glove with some water and then just finished it with my fingers. So not the neatest uh, job, but then to be honest, uh, you're going to see it so rarely just sitting on the roof here, kind of expect to see a lot of sealant anyway. And in my opinion, you want it uh, sealed properly and not leaking, then looking neat and leaking. So, um, I mean, if you are able to get it looking neat and not leak, then fair dues, fair play to you. But uh, I always just pile in the Psychoflex and I have peace of mind that there is no water getting through that thing at all. But yeah, overall pretty happy with the result. And there we go folks, we are fully installed, pretty happy with that. I've left it open now just because it's busy drying out as we speak. So uh, with Psychoflex, uh, they say, I mean I can't remember exactly what it says on the tubes, but realistically several hours before it is um, reached a reasonable level of setting that you can move it and stuff like that so i'll probably leave this for the best part of the remainder of today it's a pr pretty warm day uh here in northern ireland uh so that'll set pretty quickly can't remember exactly but it's something like gets to like 75 percent set within the first several hours and then takes a couple of weeks to reach sort of 95 percent 
or 98% thereabouts. Um, one thing with Psychoflex to bear in mind though is that you should not put it on if it's really cold. Basically if it's at freezing don't put it on because if the water within the um, the adhesive freezes, uh, it's just not going to set properly. Uh, and the way that Psychoflex works is that when it comes into contact with oxygen, uh, the chemicals do their thing within the adhesive and uh, that's what gets it to set. So uh, bear that in mind, when I put the solar panels on my camper using Psychoflex, it was borderline too cold. Uh, so I had to just watch that a little bit, but yeah, we got there in the end and those have been sweet. We've done many thousands of miles and it's been great. So that's a solid uh, roof there. As you would have seen, I put a stack of Psychoflex uh, because I really don't want this thing leaking. There's nothing worse than putting all this work into something and then having just tiny little leaks just ruining your finish and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty stoked with how that looks and where we've got to now. Uh, if you like this video, I'd love you to subscribe and follow along. This is a series where I'm going to be building out this van and documenting everything in detail like this. Uh, so hopefully somebody will find it helpful and useful uh, for them. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to probably drill the I won't say final because I don't know what else I'm putting in this, but I'm going to be drilling another hole in the roof uh, to put the little um, gland for the solar uh, cables to come through. And then I'll also be fitting the uh, roof racks. So I'm going to be putting roof rails, so two at the back and then one at the front. And then I'm going to put a system in that I can then put solar panels. I'm probably going to land up putting three solar panels on the roof. So one there just in front of the skylight and then two and three like that. So a total of about 540 watts of solar. So pretty beefy solar system, but we're putting a pretty serious battery system into this van. So yeah, pretty stoked for that. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.